You know what I was checking for? Why are you playing music? Keep playing music, Josiah. Stand and join us in worship this morning. Good morning, church family. Saturday was silent. Surely it was through. But since it was possible, ever stopped you. Friday's disappointment. It's Sunday's empty tomb Since when has impossible Ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling This is the praise of dead men walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again this is the sound of dry bones rattling Pentecost 
house of fire stirring something new you're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon resurrection power runs in my veins too i believe there's another miracle here in this room This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise we get dead men walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to just as the man who was thrown on the bones of elijah if there's anything that he can do just as the stone that was rolled at the tomb in the garden what happens when god says to move i feel him moving it now i feel him doing it now i feel him doing it doing it doing it now this is the sound of dry bones rattling oh yeah this is the phrase make a dead man walk again open the grave i'm coming out i'm gonna live gonna live again open the grave i'm coming out i'm gonna live gonna live again open the grave i'm coming out i'm gonna live gonna live again this is the sound of dry bones rattling I hear a sound. I hear the 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 sound. Live, 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 live. Dry bones in the word of the Lord. He says, live, 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 live. Dry bones in the word of the Lord. He says, live, 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 live. Dry bones in the word of the Lord. He says, live. Come on, church. This is the praise. Make a dead man walk again. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm going to live, going to live again. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm going to live, going to live again. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm going to live, going to live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Good morning, church. My name is Michael, and I get to be the pastor here at Shepherd's Community United Methodist Church. Don't sit down just yet. I'm so glad to have you join us here this morning. What I want you to do, take a moment, greet those around you, and pass the peace of Christ. Uh, members of this church, there's a lot of visitors over here. I don't know if you noticed, so maybe travel in that direction, members of Shepherd's. Thank you. Hi. Um, no, get the baptism right after this. Baptism. Well, we have baptism and then um, if you worthy. Oh, no. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Uh-oh. What's the what? Where'd it go? Oh. Oh, yeah, you can. Okay.
All right, friends, if you could please find your seat when you have a chance. Please find your seat. This morning, I'm so excited we get to celebrate a baptism. Woo-hoo! It's so much fun to have baptisms. It's great. It's, um, it's a great opportunity for the pastor to embarrass himself while he tries to hold a kid, uh, which is always fun. Um, and it's also good just to celebrate God's great gift uh, to us. It's especially nice for me as your pastor this morning because it is my brother and sister-in-law, uh, whom I love, brother-in-law and sister-in-law. What's the grammar on that? I don't know. Um, I'm not blood related to any of them, but um, I will take pastor privilege for a second and just say, I'm the reason y'all are here. Um, because one day I was driving with my, with my very, very good friend, Lauren. I said, hey, do you know that my brother-in-law has been in love with you the moment he saw you? And she said, I did not know that. Ta-da! Look what happened. So yeah, can I have Connor and Benjamin and Laura come on up and join us right here behind the baptismal font? So yesterday, family hang out all day. It was wonderful. My goal was to help this kid not be afraid of me. I succeeded in making him mortally afraid of me. So I'm not going to make eye contact lest I make him scream. Um, look at that look. Y'all know that look. Like, hey. hi, yeah, hi, yeah. <laughs> I might be doing one of these things, uh, getting the water on them. So let's celebrate together. Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Yeah, this is this guy, Benjamin Clay Cash, son of Connor and Laura Cash. All right, friends, I, I've got some questions for you. Uh, the answers are up there. You, it's not cheating if you read them. But on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. Will you nurture Benjamin in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? All right, friends, you have lines. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. Nice, I like that. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Benjamin now before you in your care? No? <laughs> And also with you. <laughs> Let's pray over this water together. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept through the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved your people in the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All right. You want to try it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Anna? What name has been given this child? 
Benjamin Clay Cash, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. Just one more. And the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, work within you that being born by water and the Spirit you may be a disciple that walks in the way that leads to life. <laughs> Yay! All right, we have a lullaby to sing to baby Benjamin, and my brother-in-law, Connor, gets to walk around the uh, sanctuary with me. And he didn't know that until now. Come on. Benjamin, Benjamin, God claims you. God helps you, protects you, and loves you too. We this day do all agree, a child of God you'll always be. Benjamin, Benjamin, God claims you, God helps you, protects you, and loves you too. Family. I didn't, I didn't even cry, Woo. which is impressive. And he didn't either. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, affirm our faith together with the reciting of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We, we recite creeds here at this church, not just to identify who's in and who's out, far from it. Instead, we recite creeds together because sometimes I need to be reminded of what I believe in and what I'm trying to believe in. Maybe you this morning, you woke up and the alarm went off a little bit too early and you thought, do I believe in God? Do I really want to do this thing? I already said to my sister that I would, you know, something like that. But here we are, and we're all going to try and believe this so that we can change the world around us. Will you stand as we sing together? Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. Do you know that all is dark will stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? It is. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us?
among us. He does. Does the Jesus our Messiah hold forever those he loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the saved from every people and tribe. He has made us a kingdom and priest to come to reign with the Son. Is He worthy? Is He worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is He worthy? Is He worthy? Is He worthy? We've come together this morning for a few reasons. One, to gather together, uh, together and celebrate a baptism. We've also gathered together to sing uh, praise to God. We've also gathered together to pray uh, for one another. And the way that Michelle's looking at me, I'm worried that I came up early. I didn't. I'm in the right spot. You yeah, yeah. Right look spot. at me. I'm not checking like uh, sports scores or anything. I'm checking the order of worship on my phone. I just want to be clear. I've been watching. I'm also checking sports scores, but mostly... <laughs> Just kidding. No one's playing right now. Um, but we've gathered together to pray. In our lives, we find ourselves uh, busy, overwhelmed, overexerted, asked too much of us. But in worship, we get to get together and have the prayers of the people, where we pause in the busyness of life and we center ourselves. So I encourage you now to put both feet on the ground if that's comfortable for you. Take a deep breath in. Maybe even put your hand over your chest if you want to. Remind yourself you're a human being, not a human doing. This Sunday, we're also celebrating All Saints Sunday. And so while I pray, I'm also going to share some of the names of the people that we call ours in this community, um, and we'll remember them uh, together. So let's take a deep breath in and out. Let's pray together. Almighty God, uh, in your mercy and in your grace, we come before you today with all the burdens of this week. We lay them at your feet, knowing that we could not handle them on our own. And God, we know that we interact with the divine in such a way that we know that our burdens are light to you, and you're happy to take them on. We come before you with all of our hopes and dreams and aspirations and lay them at your feet, knowing that you want to see them fulfilled. God, we know that we serve you, a God that loved us so much that you came and dwelt among us, put on flesh and walked around, felt the joys and the happiness of this life and felt the sadness and suffering of loss. And on this Sunday, as we welcome little Benjamin into this community, into this faithful witness of your love here in this world, we remember those who have lived a life here on this earth, constantly pointing towards your love. And we remember them, remember them this Sunday. Betty Strickland, Granny. Lisa Spires. 
George Zivkovich Sr. Reverend James Allen Jefferson. Linda Berg. God, we remember all of these saints and we thank you for their life that they have shared with us. We thank you for the ways that they've encouraged and challenged and pushed us towards your image. We pray all these things in the name of your Son who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, friends, we've got uh, some wonderful announcements to share with you about things ahead in the life of this church in uh, the season of Advent. Um, in the season of Advent, we really kind of go crazy uh, here at this church. Um, so... Um, yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm just, yeah, yeah, I'm worried you're going to tackle me. Um, so I've got some announcements I want to share with you, uh, and, and you'll see them up on the screen now. Uh, number one, we are participating in the Christmas store uh, this year. If you're from Lakeland, you know about Parker Street Ministries, this wonderful ministry that meets the needs of underserved population in central Lakeland. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to collect gifts uh, for parents so that kids can then go to the Christmas store and buy their parents gifts that their parents actually want. So no, you know, Christmas ties with Santa fishing. Uh, no, you know, what, uh, whatever gift you gave your parent that they didn't really want. Uh, so what we need you to do so we can participate and love our neighborhood well, what we need you to do is to go out, parents, and buy the gift you wish your, par- your kids would give you and buy two of them, one for yourself and put your kid's name on it. And then a second one and bring them here to this church, okay? We'll leave them in our collection box and then we'll take them down to Parker Street on December 14th and 15th. And what kids are going to be able to do, they're going to be able to go in and use a nickel, a penny, a dollar to buy, say, a television or an air fryer or a coffee maker and be able to wrap it up and give it to their parents. Um, These kids would not be able to do this. They would be instead you know, making a drawing or something and putting a bow on that. As someone that's received lots of those, those are awesome. And my air fryer can do anything. So it's a both and. It's a both and sort of thing. And this is how our church is going to love our neighborhood. The next announcement that I have for you is we are also participating in the Rudolph Roundup. We have friends here in our community, participants in the foster care system, their kids, that maybe their, their uh, family of origin is not the best. And so they're able to go into a family that loves them and is able, has all the resources they can to take care of them. We want to help them have an amazing Christmas. So these two QR codes here, you want to scan those so you can find their wish list because you don't know what kids want. As someone who does some Christmas shopping for a kid, I can tell you, you don't know what they want. So you want to scan that QR code, find exactly what these kids want, and again, bring them here. It's going to look like the North Pole here on uh, Shepherd Road. Lots of gifts out in the lobby. Uh, Our next announcement uh, is that this big uh, fount, uh, this cornucopia of blessing here, uh, our uh, church has always partnered with Medilla Elementary, or has for the last several years. Medilla Elementary is a school just a little bit north of us, um, and we've partnered with them in a myriad of ways. We uh, pay for breakfast for the teachers, we uh, have created a relaxation station for the teachers, and uh, one of the other things that we do is we purchase the turkeys for their turkey trot. How many of you have ever done a turkey trot before? You're like in those strange kind of families that runs a 5K around Thanksgiving. Well, uh, there's a joke there about like stuffing. Like I'm trying to do 5K of stuffing or something. I don't know what it is, but we'll figure it out. Um, but the turkey trot at Medilla is kids run a race and they win a turkey. Horrible uh, prize if you're a second grader. Amazing if you're the parent of a second grader, right? come home with a free turkey? Absolutely. And so what we're doing is we're collecting all the turkeys. But who wants just turkey? Because turkey isn't good. I, listen, controversial opinion, it's not good. Everyone knows it. I'm just brave enough to say it. We call this prophecy in the church, okay? I'm going to speak truth to big turkey, all right? Anyways, so you need the sides, right? Amen? Amen. Y'all still out there? Okay. There's a lot of announcements. Bear with me. Okay. 
Um, and so we wanted to provide the sides. In fact, our youth ministry wanted to provide the sides. So our second through 12th grade, <laughs> the tech booth's like, move it along, preacher. Um, uh, we wanted to provide the sides. And so this is just a bunch of sides that you as the church, but also our youth ministry has provided. What we need, I think we still have a need, Kyle, to purchase turkeys. If you've got a minute um, and, you know, a couple of turkeys to float in your bank account, uh, we need some folks to go down to the Publix and purchase two turkeys, save your receipt, and we'll pay you back for it because we raised a bunch of money at our fall fest to pay for these turkeys. Um, but you're limited to two turkeys a person, and it doesn't matter how many disguises I use, they catch me every time, okay? Uh, so we need some folks to go purchase turkeys. You can talk to Kyle in the back or Jess, who's waving her hand right now, um, and she can help you uh, get the turkeys for that. So that's what we're doing for Medilla. Uh, the next slide, our youth ministry is having a Friendsgiving. Uh, so if you want to come and participate in that, bring a dish. Uh, if you are a youth or have a youth, we'd love to have you there uh, as well. Our second to last announcement is that bro, uh, is our crafting cookbook is happening this year. So uh, how many of you have a church cookbook at home somewhere? It's like yellow pages and it has like orange salad recipe in the back. It's just Cool Whip uh, and a can of mandarin oranges. Um, but uh, it's delicious. Um, we're making one. And so scan this QR code and participate in that way. Uh, it would be better uh, with your recipe in there. Also crafting, if you crochet, if you knit, uh, we'd love to have your directions in there as well. Last announcement, amen, uh, is that on December 3rd at 10 a.m., we're going to have church on the lawn. So what that means is that look at your feet. Count how many stains you can see. We're getting new carpet. Yay! Woo! Woo! So excited. Only took us a year and a half, uh, but we're getting new carpet. And so in order for us to do that, we got to be out of here. So bring a lawn chair, bring a friend. We're going to be out by the garden and we're going to worship God in the greatest cathedral that's ever been made. Amen. And I'm very excited about that. It's all going to be Advent themed too. So we're going to sing Christmas carols. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Whew. That man, a lot of great. announcements. And he still but all of these sermon. announcements are, yeah, I still got to preach. Um, all of these announcements, all of these exciting adventures are made possible because of the generosity of the people here in this room. We are a generous church. We're a church that loves our neighborhood in such a way that we're able to show God's love in a tangible and real way. Uh, in just a moment, the ushers are going to come forward. And they're going to pass a plate. Uh, you can put your offering in there. You can also give digitally if you would like. But if you're a visitor, if this is your first time with us, what we'd really love from you is a connect card. It's either at or near your seat, um, and it says Connect Card on it. Uh, if you could fill out that information in any way that we could connect with you, we promise not to spam you, uh, but we'd love to be able to connect uh, with you. If you've been given a little bag, there should also be a Connect Card in there. Um, we are a church that loves our neighborhood. And if you want to be a part of loving this neighborhood, we need what you have, and it would be better with you here. So will the ushers please come forward as we give God's tithes and our gifts and offerings. All right, friends, if you're a kid and you want to go be a part of Kids Church, now is your time. Miss Vicky's in the back. Um, if this is your first time visiting us, you're going to have a great time. Um, we're putting you to work. They're making the little baskets uh, that all of this food is going in. It's going to be like a little workshop, uh, little elves. They'll do other things too. Don't call, you know, I don't know. That's probably against some labor law. I don't know. Uh, but it'll be a lot of fun. Um, friends, we're continuing our series called Walk by Faith. Um, 
Friends, our faith is a thing that we keep working on. Our faith is not something that we just arrive at and put down. I love that we just welcomed Benjamin into the family, but his work is not done. Uh, You don't get just a little bit of water from this font, and then all of a sudden you're good to go. Um, Because I got some water from this font. It was a little bit bigger, and I got dunked all the way down. Um, Fun story, I was talking with my friend down the street who's the preacher at the Baptist church, and he said he didn't, his baptismal font hadn't been delivered. Do you know that that's a thing that people have to deliver? Um, and I was like, you can borrow mine. I can carry it in my car. And he said, no, that won't work, because they, they dunk. That's the joke. That's why you're laughing so hard. Anyways, um, our faith isn't something that we just do once. It's a thing that we continuously work on. And when we walk by faith, when we walk in these things that make us more like Jesus, all of a sudden we find our lives changing. And it's not a thing that we do just in seasons or spurts. It's a thing that we do every day of our lives. There's this cellist who died when he was 97. He was interviewed at 95. And in his late 90s, Pablo Cassell was still practicing several hours a day at the cello. And a New York Times reporter asked him, Pablo, why do you keep practicing? In your advanced age, why do you keep practicing? And he says, I feel that I am improving. I think I'm getting better. I think sometimes in our faith we feel like we we know how to play the basics on the cello. We can say Mary had a little lamb or or, uh, hot cross buns, and then we put the practice book down. I think our Christian faith, sometimes we feel like we've arrived at a plateau and we're never going to work at it again. But friends, why would we put the practice down? Why would we stop practicing our faith when we could become more and more like Christ? You see, our discipline that we're talking about today is community. Community is a spiritual discipline. It's a spiritual discipline because sometimes community is not easy. Sometimes community is a lot of work, but it's a work that's worth doing. The thing I'm going to say a lot today, the first thing you can write in your bulletin, if that's your sort of thing, is this. There is a work to be done within you that can only be done in community. There is a work to be done within you that can only be done in community. When I think about community, I think about a few different things, but one of the things that I think about is that space right after a hurricane. Uh, Any Floridians in the room know what I'm talking about? The power's gone out, and so you go outside because it's hot in the house, and for some reason, it's oddly cool outside. You go outside, and it looks like a bomb went off, and if you own a chainsaw, you start greasing the, the chain because you're about to go to work, right? You're walking around and you're, you're asking, how do you still have power? And I don't. Um, oh, you did get one of those generators? Dang it, I really should have done that. Yeah. And, and we share. We're out in our community. We're in our front yards. It's something that really takes a category four or higher for us to do in this modern age. And then on the flip side, as someone who grew up uh, in Polk County in, in Lake Wales, when I think about community, I think about everyone knowing our stories. Uh, The thing about uh, being from a small town is that you know everything, and everyone else knows everything, too. Um, I see some friends from Lake Wales that know about that. Anyone over there? Yeah. Um, I've heard full-on stories about people that I haven't seen for years in Walmart. You know, I can catch up on their whole life because a community that small, you're, you're tight and close. You're doing life near one another. But Christian community needs to be a third thing. It needs to be different than just walking out in your front porch after a hurricane has happened. And it has to be something more than just being in other people's business. It needs to be a third thing. A little bit of both, but something better altogether. Because there is a work to be done within you that can only be done in community. We have a passage today from Hebrews uh, chapter 11 and chapter 12. And a tradition that we have here at this church um, is, like all good Methodists, we say, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. And also, like all good Methodists, we say, thanks be to God. Like we just opened uh, socks that you'll never wear uh, from your grandmother, right? You need to say thank you, but you can't be happy about it, right? And so what we decided to do is that we're going to say thanks be to God, and then we say that ancient Hebrew word from riding a roller coaster, which is woo! 
And so if you want to participate in that with us, you can. I just, if you're a visitor, I don't want you to be freaked out that we do this. So uh, hear the word of the Lord from the, from the book of Hebrews. What more can I say? I could run out of time if I told you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Through faith they conquered kingdoms, brought about justice, realized promises, shut the mouth of lions, put out raging fires, escaped from the edge of the sword, found strength in weakness, were mighty in war, and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured and refused to be released so they could gain a better resurrection. So then, with endurance, let's also run the race that is laid out in front of us. Since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let, let us throw off any extra baggage, get rid of the sin that trips us up, and fix our eyes on Jesus, faith's pioneer and perfecter. He endured the cross, ignoring the shame, for the sake of the joy that was laid out in front of him, and sat down at the right side of God's throne. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Woo! So this passage is, uh, is from the book of Hebrews, which is a sermon. Uh, most scholars think that this is a written down sermon that was shared, more than likely preached by a woman. Uh, that's why we don't see the name uh, in the passage in the book. Um, in just the few chapters before, you hear the Hall of Faith or the Hall of Fame. Uh, these are the who's who of the Bible characters, right? These are the big stories that you've heard, um, the names that uh, they, they've retired the jersey, as it were. Uh, if, there's, if there's jerseys in heaven, these are in the rafters, okay? You read chapter 11, chapter 10, you see these men and women that have really done a great job sharing God's love and, and following God's law. And uh, when we see all these stories, we realize that being part of a community means sharing a story with history. That means being a part of a community means sharing a story with history. When we share a story with history, that means that we are not just Christians trying our best. We're not just people trying to be good. We're instead connected to stories that go back to the very beginning. When we look at the history of the faithful who have gone before us, we can see ways that we want to change our lives. When we're tied in, when we're connected to stories of the past, we find that we are not on our own. There's a trend that's been growing. It's not new, but it's growing, of being spiritual but not religious. When we're spiritual but not religious, we retain some of the good things of Christian faith. We have that love of the universe, of the creator, working within our lives. But when we're not religious, we lose the stories of those that have gone before us. We miss out on being tied to that history. Now, there are benefits to that. The church does not have a perfect record. Um, the church has made plenty of mistakes, both in ancient history and modern history. There's plenty of reasons to want to tie yourself away from the history of the church. But friends, when we read this passage, we see that there are so many things that come, so many benefits that come from being tied to the story of a community because there is a work to be done within you that can only be done in community. I think one of the things that happens when we tear ourselves away from the stories of a community is that we get more and more isolated. See, our, our culture, our country is getting more and more isolated, getting lonelier and lonelier. We find people losing those connections, those touchstones that tied them to their neighborhood. We see people losing those things that gave them identity. And we've outsourced the things that make us human. All of us, a lot of us, have either in our pocket or our purse this fantastic rectangle that connects us to everything that ever was or ever will be, right? Uh, we can just open up an app and all of a sudden we were getting an endorphin, a serotonin, uh, you know, all sorts of these wonderful things that we used to only get from sitting and talking to people. Now, I know I might be sounding like um, an old timer. I might be sounding like a Luddite. I get it. I understand. And anyone that follows me on Instagram knows I love did it, scroll, did it, scroll. And then I see this little red heart that tells me that people love me. Uh, I'm a two on the Enneagram. That's what I need in this world, y'all. I need a machine that tells me I'm loved. 
at every moment of every day, right? And yet, when we outsource it to these, these businesses, these machines, these things that are not other people, we find ourselves lonelier and lonelier. We're getting isolated. We're getting removed from what God actually calls us to. You see, the church must reclaim her place as the safest place for outcasts. The church for too long has forgotten that we're the place that outcasts are able to go, that we're the safe place. Too often the church has been a place that has shown others that they're not welcome, that they are not wanted, that they're not needed. The church needs to reclaim her place of the outcasts. Because the thing is, if you read the Hall of Faith, you read Hebrews 11, you read Hebrews 10, you find a list of people that had incredible faith. You also find a list of, forgive me, kind of losers. You know, they weren't the ones like leading Fortune 500 companies. They weren't on the cover of any magazines. A lot of them got chased down by the authorities and murdered. (laughs) They weren't well-respected and loved in their time, and yet we see that they were safe, heard, and loved by the God of the universe. Friends, there is a work to be done within you that can only be done in community. Here's what community can't be. Community can't be a place that limits who joins, a club that limits who joins. We can't be a place that says, well, uh, you can come, but you can't join up. You, you can show up and maybe give or sing every once in a while, but you can't actually be a part of us because we, we have a list of things that we need uh, from you. Um, there are no dues uh, in the life of the church. If we're going to be a real community that God's called us to, it needs to be a thing where everyone's welcome, right? If this message is for everyone, then where is everyone? We need to open the door wider and wider and wider. But on the flip side of that, the church, the community that God is asking us to build, the church cannot be a club that just makes us feel good about ourselves, where we go in and we get to celebrate how right we are. We get to go together, we recite a little creed, we talk about how dumb everyone else is and how smart we are, and we pat each other on the back and we say, poor little bunny, did they tell you you were wrong? And then, you know, shake us all up and release us into the world. The world doesn't need another place for that. We already have cable news. We don't need another place that tells us that we're right and everyone else is wrong. The church cannot be that. But instead, the, the church really needs to be a place that welcomes all and challenges all. The church cannot be, uh, you know, a cool clubhouse with a secret passcode. Uh, there was this uh, movie when I was a kid called The Little Rascals, um, and it was the one that was made in the 90s, sorry. Um, but it was, came on a VHS, and my library had it. I wore that thing down, man. It, that, that, that starts at the beginning got deeper and deeper every single week. I, I, I watched that thing forever. And I think sometimes, friends, that the church has become the he-man woman-hating club. Uh, It has become a place where just boys are allowed or just people are allowed that that are in. They know the secret password and uh, and they're welcome in and everyone else is not welcome in. I think the church has become that too much. We have to drop our secret passcodes. We have to drop the things that make us feel safe, heard, and loved and, and exclude the world around us. And the reason why we need to do this is not just because the God of the universe has commanded us to do so, although pretty good reason, to be fair. It is also because we need what the world, what the people around us have. When we recited the Apostles' Creed, we said that we believe in the Holy Catholic Church. And every time that we do that, I think, I wonder if someone thought they went to the wrong church. Like they like saw the wrong sign and they were like, this looks Methodist, right? Um, This is not a, a Roman Catholic church, but the word Catholic means united. We believe in the holy united church, which means that I can't be holy unless y'all are here. I can't be holy unless the whole of the church gathers together. And we take all of our gifts and abilities, our faults, our hang-ups, and all the good stuff that God can work with. Only then can we become truly holy. When we become a club that identifies who can be in and who, can, and who must be out, we lose all of those gifts friends. We find ourselves less holy than we were before because, friends, there is a work to be done within you that can only be done in community. And ultimately, it has to be a community of faith. 
You can't be a community based off of ideas or programs or even a denomination. It has to be a community based off of faith. You see, the, this list of believers, this hall of faith, has one thing in common, and that's faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. You see, in a life of faith, you need others to say, I think I believe in that too. And so when we, you know, recite the creed, when we sing together, when we get together on Christmas Eve and light candles and say the light shines into the, dar into the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it, man, I need someone else to say that too. Because I can't believe it all the time. I watch the news, I read about the atrocities happening in the world around me in my very own neighborhood, and I stop believing. But then I come here, and I hear the kids say the Lord's Prayer. I see people older than me holding up the light, and all of a sudden I believe just a little bit more. You see, because without community, faith gets weak. There is a work to be done within you that can only be done in community. Because our community, our community has work to do to remind people of their dreams. Because at some point, someone told Whitney Houston, girl, you can sing, right? Someone told Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., brother, you can preach. Someone told Elvis that, man, you can dance. Not like that, but you can dance. At least not here, right? And someone told Taylor Swift, you can do whatever it is that you're doing. I guess printing money? Is that what she's doing now? I, I haven't been keeping up. Um, she's dating a, something or other. Anyways, um, it takes a community to show someone that they can do what they believe they might be able to do. It takes a community to look at a little person and say, I think that you're going to do something great. It takes a community to look at someone older and say, I don't think God has done with you. I think there's more yet for you to accomplish. There's more. There's more. Friends, which of your dreams stayed in your head because no one pulled them out? This community's job, then, is to help dreams get born. This community's job is to help dreams get born because too many dreams have stayed in our heads because no one had a chance to tell us that those dreams were worth bringing into the world. There is a work to be done within you that can only be done in community. And community challenges us. At this point, all I've told you is that community is a great place where everyone's welcome. And you might be Whitney Houston. You don't even know, right? But community is also work. Community is a challenge. You see, wrong ideas can get challenged here in community. I can't tell you how many long-suffering Sunday school teachers had to deal with a 16-year-old Michael who had everything figured out. I'd roll up to Sunday school, tell them all the ways that they were wrong, and they would politely and gently correct me. Uh, sometimes gently, sometimes just directly, right? Um, but I had it all figured out, and it took people within my church community to tell me that there was another way to see things. Wrong ideas can get challenged. You see, the church needs to remember that we also need to challenge ourselves. I think sometimes the church gets to wander a little bit. We begin challenging people that aren't a part of our community. Well, we've got a lot of work to do within our doors, within our walls, right, friends? And we've got people that we can challenge within ourselves. But ultimately, friends, complacency fails in the presence of a loving community. It is hard to sit on your hands and watch the world go by when you find yourself a part of a loving community. It is hard to think that God is done with you if you're surrounded by people that believe in you. It is hard to think that this world is just the way it's always going to be and has been forever if you've got people that are egging you on to something new. There is a work to be done within you that can only be done in community. We have to keep running. So let us throw off all the sin that hinders us or binds us up because of this great cloud of witnesses all around us, this great community we find ourselves in. 
Friends, I don't know about you, but I have no interest in dying the way that I am right now. I have no interest. I'm, I'm 35. I hope to change a lot by the time I'm 90. <laughs> if I, uh, by the time I'm 36, frankly, friends. It, if I'm not changing, if I'm, if I'm not becoming more like Jesus, if I'm not growing, then I don't know if I deserve this breath or the next. There is work to be done. I could look just a little bit more like Jesus this year. But if I'm not in community, it's not going to happen. And I'll look at the stories of the past. I'll look at the hall of faith. I'll see what they're doing. But friends, I'll also look around at all of you. And I'll see the way the Holy Spirit is showing up in your life. I can't help but be inspired of this church. Look at this big old pile of carbs in front of me. This only happened because of God's great love at work in the lives of young people. Amazing. This would still be a Publix if it weren't for God's great love. When we baptize a little one, we see nothing but potential, right, friends? We see nothing but stories ahead. A belief that this child has been called out and claimed by God as one of God's own so that the world might get a little bit brighter. So not only do I look at stories of the past, but I look around me. And if I'm in Christian community, I get encouraged and I get inspired to do something greater and grander because there's a work that needs to be done within all of us that can only be done in community. So my challenge for us today is this. Who will be your people? Who will be the ones that challenge and inspire you? The ones that push you and prod you and encourage you onward? Who will be the people that will call you when your ideas are wrong or off base, but also remind you of God's infinite love and grace in your life? Let's pray together. Almighty God, you have blessed us with community and given us a chance to see your face in the face of those around us. God, in your mercy and in your grace, help us then to reflect that love into the world, that, your world, that this world might become your kingdom. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We serve a God that is so into community that the way that we remember that God is through a dinner party. Amen? There was this dinner party uh, 2,000 years ago where Jesus sat down with all of his friends, broke bread, and shared wine. And his presence was here and in this space. And now we get to remember that presence here in this space now. Uh, as United Methodists, we practice something called an open table, which means that you don't need to be a member of this church or any church in order to participate in this sacrament. The reason why is because Christ invited all to the table so that Christ's presence could be with them here in this moment and here in this space. So let's celebrate together. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let's take a moment and quietly reflect within our hearts the ways we have missed the mark this week. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity 
made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners like me. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so... In remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by your blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one in ministry to all the world and one with each other until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. In just a moment, my friend's going to come and help me serve communion to the praise team. We're going to give him a little bit of bread and they're going to dip it in the cup and take and eat both. Uh, you can come up with your hands like this because grace is a gift that we receive, not a thing that we take. We'll take a little bread and dip it in the cup, take and eat both, thereby receiving both the body and blood of Christ in this sacrament. Sacrament is what we say is a thing when we're impersonating Jesus. So we're doing a thing that Jesus did so we can look a little bit more like him. If uh, you need gluten-free elements, the station over here will have gluten-free elements for you. If the idea of taking a bit of bread and dipping it in a cup around a bunch of people that you don't know very well makes you uncomfortable for any reason at all, if you come with your arms crossed, you'll receive a blessing, but still participate in that table by doing that, uh, that sign and receiving a blessing. This table is an opportunity for us to commune with the very real presence of God here in this space, here in this time. Uh, we believe that when we receive this tangible sign of grace, we are reminded that we are sustained by a community and by a God that wants to see us become more and more like Christ. So my friend, come, uh, and uh, the praise team, will you also come? Friends, you are welcome to this table. You do not need to be a member of this church or any church. All you need is for a desire to experience God's grace in your life. The table is open. All are welcome. Come taste and see that the Lord is good.
Friends, we have participated in this divine mystery. May we be changed and transformed, that the world around us might be changed and transformed as well. Friends, thank you for joining us in worship this morning. Will you please stand uh, as we sing? No longer I who live, but Christ in me, for I've been into the light of grace just like Lazarus oh you brought me back to life when there was dead religion now there is living faith all of my hope and freedom I found in Jesus name just like Lazarus brought me back to life. No longer I who live, but Christ in me, for I've been born again. My heart is free, the hope of heaven before me, the grave behind. Hallelujah, you brought me back to life. says I am guilty, I point to the price you paid. When something says I'm not worthy, I'll point to the empty, empty grave, just like Lazarus. Oh, you brought me back to life. How can I begin to thank you for all that you've done for me? Jesus, to fully praise you, it will take all eternity, just like Lazarus. Oh, you brought me back to life. Oh, you brought me back to life. No longer I who live, but Christ in me, for I No longer I who live, but Christ in me, for I've been born again. My heart is free, the hope of heaven before me, the grave behind. Hallelujah, you brought me back. said you are mine the enemy thought he had me jesus said you are mine the enemy thought he had me but jesus said you are mine the enemy thought he had me but jesus said you are mine no longer i who live but christ in me for i've been born Friends, I want you to take a few things with you. You're going to get a blessing in just a second, which I want you to take with you. Uh, the baptismal font is here for you to come and remember your baptism. 
You can do that in a couple different ways. You can just put your finger in it. You can flick it at your friend, put it on your forehead. If you've been baptized, this is your chance to remember that God's grace is still with you. A few other things I want you to take with you. I don't know if you saw, but there's great big orange things out there. Please take like 12 pumpkins with you. The amount that I want you to take pumpkins cannot be quantified. Every pumpkin you don't take, I have to schlep to the back five acres. Schlep is a, is a, yeah, it's, a it's ancient Hebrew. Anyways, um, if you could please take like 38 pumpkins, I'd be so grateful. Also get some scissors, snip some zinnias, which are those flowers. Take some of those, okay? Uh, men, uh, it, it's never a bad thing to bring flowers home. Just saying. And ladies, you deserve it, okay? Take a whole bunch. All right, receive this blessing as you go. Go from this place. Know that the story of the whole of Scripture walks with you, and I cannot wait to see what story God writes in your life through this community. Go in peace. Amen. This is the sound of chapels rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again.